All right, we're going to go ahead and plug in our chest noter into our laptop. It's going to pop up with the internal storage for the chest noter Nexus 6. And we're going to go to the chest noter folder. And in here we have today's uh, game that we played, the Fidi game. So go ahead and drop that on the desktop. Um, in this folder, um, there's now going to be three files, uh, which are all labeled based on uh, the last name of white, last name of black, the, um, the tournament we played in, which round, and then the date. So essentially, we're going to have the log file, the PDF uh, of the game, and the PDF is going to have all the move list, the signatures that we have, the outcome of the game, which was a draw. It's going to be missing that arbiter signature because, again, um, we, didn't, we skipped the arbiter signature, and we didn't correct the last of those moves, so we've got some dashes in there. And this may look a little funny because it's not, uh, it's not opened up at full full size. So when you open it up at full size, it actually has the full border of, of everything in here. So uh, we've got our PGN2, which we can open up. And it takes a second here for Chessbase uh, to launch. It's an older laptop, I apologize. So in here, we've got our uh, game, which again was a draw. Dallas, Texas Open, USA, the date, uh, the round, and the board number that we sat at, and white and black. If you open it up, uh, it'll launch the game. And then in here, you can just step through the game and the moves. Uh, and as you see over here, we have the dashes because we didn't complete the game. So the big thing that we wanted to show off in here again was, um, was the text file. So this is the log file that it creates from the game. If you open it up with the normal uh, text notepad, it's not going to look proper uh, just because uh, notepad doesn't know how to handle spacing properly uh, with text files. So, um, we recommend opening up the file with like a notepad plus plus. There's also another open source uh, application called Atom, uh, spelled A-T-O-M, uh, which you can use to open it up as well. Um, and when you open it up, you'll be able to see all the moves inside uh, inside the, the log file. And, and again, this log file is, is strictly created for tournament directors and arbiters um, from, you know, for both the US uh, Chess Federation uh, and then also uh, for FIDE. Again, this is this is helping really show that um, everything that that the user is doing on the device while they're playing the game. Uh, and here we see that the very first thing that was done was the timer was turned on. It shows the timestamp at 10:51 and 17 seconds. Again, my clock's a little off right now because I recorded that initial video in the morning at 10 o'clock, and I'm going back to finish the recordings now at 7:13 in the uh, in the evening. So uh, in here, uh, the next thing is a new move. It shows the move that we made was E4. Again, it timestamps it, another new move, E5, and so forth. So as we go down and scroll through this game, we'll see all the moves that were made up to the point that uh, the user made it to, uh, to Knight F6. After Knight F6, the user got into time pressure. As soon as they got into time pressure, it shows the dashes that it created uh, and essentially he went through and dashed all those all those moves uh, So he's he's still having time trouble here going through all the moves uh, And then essentially after he gets to the time pressure and finishes that last time pressure um, At this point he turned off the time pressure um, Which it doesn't state that it just it's going to state the move that he's going to make which is the replace move so uh, after he turned off the time pressure he went back and started doing the replace move and, and shows the, the replace moves. Move number seven, D6. Um, move number six, um, D3. So if you remember, I skipped ahead um, on accident. And, and these aren't going to be labeled per the, the, the numbers that you have for moves. So like um, it's usually like one. And then in that first move, there's two moves. And then move two. And then there's two moves and so forth. And here it's just going to list it based on, on the moves that they made. Uh, based on what the move would have been, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth. So I, I overwrote that first move, which was d6, and then it wasn't far enough back, so I had to go back and step, and so I did move um, uh, six, which was d3, and then move seven, which was d6, and so forth and so on. So as I completed the game, as you'll see here, it, you go through each individual move, and it shows all the moves that were made, the time steps were made, and then at the very end, uh, the game was ended, and it was listed as a draw. So uh, again, this 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 uh, text document that's going to now be created with all uh, tournament games is going to show basically a a log file of exactly what happened. So this will help, um, I think, really prove 
uh, to people that Chestnoter is not a, a cheating device in any shape, way, or form. Um, now we're actually tracking every single move that's being made by the by the user that's using the Chestnoter, and I think this is going to help clear up any concerns that people may or may not have had with the Chestnoter in terms of it looking like a cell phone. So thank you.